If you plan on building, furnishing, or remodeling your home, or you're just tired of paying retail, don't spend another dollar. Now, you can enjoy an incredible selection of top quality, name brand products, priced up to 50% less than retail at Direct Buy. Since trying Direct Buy, I think we've saved a little bit over uh, $20,000. Nine to $10,000 just on the kitchen alone. We saved roughly around $27,000. Direct Buy allows us to do the thing that we wouldn't be able to do because we'd be giving our money away. Just giving our money away to a retail store. Take the first step towards saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars on nearly anything for your home. Call for your free Direct Buy Insider's Guide to Buy Direct and learn what retailers don't want you to know. Each full-color page of the Insider's Guide is packed with powerful information. Discover some of the hundreds of thousands of products available from over 500 name brand manufacturers. Everything, including furniture, cabinets, appliances, flooring, lighting fixtures, and so much more. All without retail markups at Direct Buy. I found all of my favorite manufacturers in the Direct Buy membership. Direct Buy carries all these brands that last. Direct Buy carries all of my favorite brands. But what I've found in shopping through Direct Buy is that I can actually upgrade into my wealthy neighbor's favorite brands. If we never discovered Direct Buy, I would not have furnished my home like I have. You can't afford to miss this valuable opportunity. Call the number on your screen now to get your own Direct Buy Insider's Guide. You'll also receive a visitor's pass and map to the Direct Buy showroom nearest you. The sooner you call, the sooner you'll be buying direct. If someone told me I had to go back and shop I couldn't do it. I, was, I am so spoiled to know what the real cost is. You can't afford to miss this valuable opportunity. The sooner you call, the sooner you'll be buying direct. So call now. We know the responsibility, the history of a great team. 15 great cups for the oldest pro football team in North America. The Argos bring the CFL atmosphere to the big city. And the visitors, they have a little extra when they come to town. They want to beat us. But of course, that's because we are the team. We can lift it. We can step it up. We are ready. Makes for a great show. Here comes the Argos. Right now is right around the corner for Canadians tired of taking those calls from telemarketers. No, no, thank you. You'll soon be able to stop those calls, although there will be a few exemptions. Hello and welcome to CTV News. I'm Dan Matheson. Also ahead this hour, accused war criminal Radovan Karadzic is now in jail in Holland. And what's on the agenda for the federal Tories? They are gathering right now to map out a strategy. First, the top story. The Canadian Cancer Society wants the federal government to ban teenagers from using tanning beds. The group says the devices increase the risk of skin cancer. What the Cancer Society wants teens to do instead is use sprays and lotions, natural sunlight, to get that golden glow. A spokesperson says the ban is a natural progression from the laws that prevent young people from smoking or drinking. The World Health Organization also supports a tanning ban. A new report has a warning for diabetic women who are thinking about having a baby. According to this American study, diabetic women who get pregnant are three to four times more likely than other women to have a child with birth defects. Nearly 40 types of birth defects were found to be significantly more common, including heart abnormalities, missing kidneys, and spine deformities. This is the largest study of its kind. It provides the most information to date on the effects of diabetes on an unborn child. Canadians will soon be able to screen most telemarketers. It is expected that the CRTC will announce September 30th as the start date for a do not call list. This process will allow Canadians who don't want to be contacted by telemarketers to register their phone numbers. The list will have exceptions including charities, political parties, and pollsters. It will also allow calls from businesses that already have a relationship with the owner of that phone number. Well, Canada has a five-year contract to manage the list. They will also investigate complaints. Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert says he will not run for re-election. He made that announcement today in a televised address. Olmert says he is leaving his position as leader of the Kadima Party so his successor can form a government. 
That leader will be chosen as Kadima's party primary in September. If his successor can form a coalition in the Israeli parliament, the country could have a new government by October. Otherwise, an election campaign will be held, and that could take several months. Olmert is facing several corruption charges, all of which he denies. Europe's most wanted fugitive is now behind bars in the Netherlands awaiting trial for alleged crimes against humanity. Authorities in Serbia whisked Radovan Karadzic out of the country in the middle of the night. Gloria Riviera has more. Former Bosnian Serb leader Radovan Karadzic flew into the Hague early this morning to face justice at the UN War Crimes Tribunal. He's indicted for the most serious crimes under international law, genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. He was transferred to a small UN jail cell in the same prison that once housed his former mentor, ex-Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic. His alleged atrocities include the ethnic cleansing of non-Serbs, the murder of 8,000 Muslim and Croat men and boys at Srebrenica, and the three-year siege of Sarajevo. But it could be years before his case is decided. We already started reviewing the indictment uh, and hope to present this case as efficient as possible. But it, I'm not in a position today to, to measure it uh, in, in terms of money. Last night in Belgrade, thousands of Serbian ultra-nationalists clashed with police over Karadzic's detention. Her reaction is divided along ethnic lines. Newspapers in Sarajevo celebrated the news of his extradition. Karadzic managed to evade capture for 13 years. Towards the end, he lived and worked in Belgrade, in disguise, but so openly, some critics say the Serbian government could have found him years ago. Now the Serbian government is under pressure to bring in two other fugitives. That could help the country gain admittance to the European Union, a long-held goal for Serbia. Gloria Riviera, ABC News, London. Paulia Makovan prepared the indictment against Karadzic back in the mid-1990s. He is now a law professor at McGill University and he joins us on the line from Copenhagen. Mr. Akavan, genocide charges are extremely complicated. They're very difficult to prove. Can you tell us what the main challenges uh, that lie ahead for the prosecution? Well, there are both crimes against humanity uh, charges and genocide charges against Balaban Karadzic. Crimes against humanity refers to massive atrocities in general, and genocide refers to crimes which resemble mass killing of the sort that we see in Srebrenica. And I think it's safe to say that ethnic cleansing as such uh, is a crime against humanity and aspects of it, uh, such as mass murder, constitute genocide. And we already have conviction uh, against uh, several individuals in the War Crimes Tribunal uh, of genocide for the mass murder uh, uh, of the, uh, the 8,000 Muslim men and boys in Srebrenica. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is that uh, you can uh, imagine uh, what amount of proof is required to demonstrate, let's say, the murder of 8,000 people or, or the fact that 12,000 people were killed through shelling and sniping in Sarajevo over three years. So these are very complex, necessarily lengthy trials. And while we may have a desire to see quick results, we have to let justice take its course because these are not intended to be show trials, they are intended to be fair trials that truthfully and accurately establish the historical record. And, and yet, sir, that said, the process took so long with Milosevic, he died in prison before this trial yes, was over. I don't, think, I don't think it's fair to say that Milosevic died because the trial was mm -hmm. lengthy. Uh, um, uh, that was really uh, uh, random, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, act of faith. And uh, uh, I, I think that uh, one cannot blame the tribunal because we lost which had a heart attack in prison. So uh, I think in general, it's important to have an expeditious, efficient trial. You don't want the trial to drag on too long. But at the same time, uh, you have to give the defendant an adequate opportunity to, to answer.